The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay new exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Once again, we present our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, in the romantic comedy adventure, Bright Star. It's morning in the editorial offices of the Hillsdale Morning Star. Susan, the owner, George, her star reporter, and Sammy, the copy boy, do not have a starry look in their eyes. (laughs) In fact, they seem to be having a dim time this bright a.m., It's an outrage. Look at her, Sammy. Standing there, niftily drawing on her spotless white gloves while her newspaper goes to pot. Get in there and fight. George Harvey, Sammy, small fry, yes, ma'am. Fellow journalists, I see no good in letting my blood pressure rise because our circulation is falling. Today is my one day of the month at the children's home, and they're waiting for me. Yeah, but we need you here. They need me there. Worse than we do? They're smaller children. Oh. Oh, George, I realize the paper's in trouble, but... So are those children. You know something? There's hardly any magic left in the world. But there is some. We can't let those children grow up to think it's all gone and that we've let it die. Magic? We grow up, George, and we call it illusion, ideals, faith. But they call it magic. It's a bit of magic to them when a stranger takes an interest in them. So, this is my day with them and I won't change. Goodbye, all. You believe in magic. Bye, children. She's balmy. Magic. The woman's clean bath. Not that this paper couldn't use some high-level magic. Yeah, we need some hocus to focus in the light. Hey, that's not bad, Sammy. You may quote me. Hey, wait a minute, Sammy. Magic. That's it. If it takes magic to save this paper, we'll get magic. Uh, hand me that pencil. That's magic. And slide me that notebook. That's magic. Sammy, I've got a bright idea. That's magic. <laughs> children. Anything wrong? Nothing wrong. He thinks it's all right for young kids, Miss Susan. Well, I'm 11. Anyhow, I don't like to sing. Well, I understand your mother's quite a good singer. I wouldn't know. She has to go from city to city to make a living. You understand that, don't you, Rodney? No. Now, you're clenching your teeth again, Rodney. Why doesn't my mother get married again and stay home and take me away from here? You wouldn't want to make your mother marry just anybody, would you? In a hurry, would you? Well, we'll talk about it later. We'll work things out somehow. You'll see. 
Come on, Rodney. I got to see butterflies. Hillsdale Children's Home, Miss Armstrong. Susan, I've got it. I've got it all worked out. We're in. What? What have you got? Magic. What? Magic. As in magic lantern, as in magic carpet, as in the Arabian Nights. Now just give me ten minutes of your personal attention, and I'll give your children's home kids the time of their lives. Now, is that an offer, or should I go soak my head? It, it's something for the children? Wonderful for their hearts and great for our circulation. George, I'm coming right back. <laughs> Can't you see it, Susan? Everybody in town getting into the spirit of the thing. We'll turn the town into a magic city right out of the Arabian Nights. Everybody will play a part for the kids. Yeah. You like it, huh? Oh, like it. I love it. We'll push the mayor and his pussyfooting about the new reservoir right off the front page. We'll put the Caliph of Baghdad in there instead. Yes, and now, what'll we call it? It's got to have a name. Isn't it a great promotion? You know, I could win a prize for this. I've got it. We'll call it the Arabian Days. Arabian Nights, Arabian Days, see? It's in. And we'll call the sheriff in bad the jailer. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah, and, and the whole town will play mother and father to those orphans, right? Right. All of Hillsdale, right? Uh, we'll give them a time. Yeah. And, and, and I know, we'll call the town Mom Dad. Mom Dad? Yeah, Mom Dad, Mom Dad, Bag Dad, Mom Dad, don't you see? Oh, Mom Dad. Yeah, well, I know it sounds corny <laughs> to you, but it's magic to them. Golden corn, magic corn. Every kernel you eat makes you wiser. Yeah. Makes you understand the language of the birds and the beasts. And... Yes, and of the little children. You like it, huh? Oh, I love it, oh, George. Morning star, George Harvey. George, I just wanted to tell you you're a hero at the orphanage here. Oh, well, they like it, huh? They're dancing in the hallways, and they just made a wonderful suggestion. Well, all wonderful suggestions, gratefully rejected. The Arabian Nights Baghdad had a caliph of Baghdad. That's right, Harun El Rashid, caliph of Baghdad, defender of the faithful. So? Everybody wants you to be caliph of Mondad. Well, I accept. And they want me to be Khalifa. Sold to George Harvey of the Morning Star, Hillsdale's most progressive newspaper. All right, get started on some copy right away. It's in the works. And George... Come to my house for dinner? Dinner? Ha! Yeah, I'm old. I'll see you. Sammy? I'm back. Copy. Oh, oh, it's only you. Yep. On time for the middles. Never knew you to come late for a free meal. Come in. Ah, smells good. Ross beef. Ah, gallant beef to smell so lovely even in death. Two minutes with you, and I'll be a vegetarian. There, there, patience, you little diggins. <laughs> Five minutes with you, and I resign from humanity. Well, yeah, where's Miss Susan? Oh, uh, who have we here? Uh, children, this is Mr. George Harvey from Miss Susan's paper. This is Rodney. Oh, hiya, Rodney. From the battleship of the same name. Oh. <laughs> this is Jocelyn. How do you do? Uh, from the lullaby of the same name, I presume? Oh, 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 uh, excuse me. Excuse me. What's the matter? What did I do? The wrong thing, as usual. Well, that's her name, isn't it? Yes, it's her name. Now, Jocelyn, honey, don't cry. He didn't mean anything. He's a fiend, darling. What did I say wrong, Rodney? I don't know. She's pretty young. Uh, you here for dinner? Same as you. Well, no offense. You go to school, huh? Do you? Well, I finished. Oh, good for you. Oh, thanks, old man. It's okay. You're kind of fresh, aren't you? What'd you have to go and make Jocelyn cry for? Well, what did I do, Rodney? I, I, I don't know what it's about yet. Well, you don't have to sit there giving me the old fish eye. Oh, hello, George. Oh, hello, Susan. I'm so glad you're on time. Oh, have you gentlemen met? Yeah, we've met. Well, then we'll go right on into dinner, shall Excuse we? Excuse me, Miss Susan. Could I eat later with Jocelyn? Well, yes, if you want it that way. Yes, ma'am. Well, then we'll all sit around and get acquainted after dinner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, could I borrow some plain sugar? Sugar? Well, I brought along my chemical set. I want to make an experiment. Does that sound all right to you, George? No, it sounds perfectly harmless. Sure, go ahead, uh, Sonny. And don't call me that if it gives you a bad sprain, Mr. Harvey. Well, come and get it. Shall we go in to dinner, George? I'm afraid it's getting hot. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, lovely dinner, Susan. Lovely. We'll have more of it then. No, no, I couldn't. It was marred only by one thing. What's that? Me. Oh, now, George, you mustn't fret any more about Jocelyn. How could you have known that mentioning the lullaby from Jocelyn would hurt her? How could you have known that her mother always played it for her and that she died two years ago? Yeah, the poor kids. Susan, don't get sore at me if I blow my top with them now and then. I, I like children, Susan, a lot, but uh, I just can't seem to make up to them yet. Well, you'd better learn then, because I love children, too. And I can make up to them. Susan. Yes? Susan, be patient with me. Be patient you know, with me, and I, I promise you I'll, I'll be a good father. You'll see. Well, you'll be a wonderfully strong and tender father. I know. And you'll... You'll be... I, I can't go on. What, George? I've never seen you so moved. <laughs> I'm touched. I, I've never seen you quite like this or talking this way. I, I mean the, the eternal wife and mother and... Me? And you look so calm and, and beautiful and, well, Madonna-like. <laughs> Silly thing to say. Well, it's a lovely thing to say, but I... Personally, I... I've always liked Richard. Richard, should I know about him? For a boy's name, I mean. For a girl, I... Well, I don't know. Mary, maybe. Simple. But his name is Rodney. Whose is? Oh, Rodney's is. Oh, but I... I... Rodney is to be your son during the Arabian days. I know. And Jocelyn's to be my daughter. Is that what we were just talking about? Well, I thought it was. What were you talking about? Well, nothing. We're nothing. the caliph and the caliph of mom, dad. And, and every mom, daddyan will expect us to do our duty. Uh-huh. I got to be that little firecracker's dad all week. Oh, now he's a good boy, really. He's he's belligerent because he's insecure and on the defensive like so many orphans. Why does he always have to eat my head off? What did I ever do? I... Heaven! What's that? An explosion! Fire! 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 Now back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. Fire Chief Hagedorn is in the living room with Susan and George after the explosion in the basement. Rodney and Jocelyn stand by wide-eyed. We're terribly sorry this happened, Mr. Hagedorn. Yeah. Yes, we wouldn't have called the fire department, but we really thought it was a fire. You see, Rodney here was experimenting. Gunpowder I was making. He was making gunpowder. Yeah, gunpowder, that's all. Well, that's all, huh? He's a very talented boy. Well, I tried using sugar in the formula instead of charcoal. Sugar being organic, too, see? He's got a mind, that boy. Yeah, smart little fella, aren't you? I was on the quiz kids once. I skunked him. You naturally would. And I may add that you've done a mighty poor job raising this firebug son of yours. Well, now, just one small moment there, Chief Hungry Hatchet. For your information, Rodney here uh, happens George, to be... Huh? Um, you, you just tell him what you think of your son. Uh, but... Oh. Oh, yeah. I was just about to say, Chief, I am not at all displeased with my boy. As a matter of fact, he's the best boy I ever had. Uh, some folks just ain't choosy. Goodbye. Good night, Chief. Yeah, we're doing fine so far. Well, I'll be on my way. Good night, Susan. Uh, don't bother to go at the door. Good night, Rodney. Jocelyn. Good night, Good night George. He stuck up for me. Yes, he sure did. He said I was his son, his real son. He does things like that. Gee. He's funny that way. But he's kind of nice, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, come on, children. Upstairs to bed. Tomorrow's a big day in Magic Arabia. Hurry, hurry, all the secrets of Arabia before your very eyes. The giant hammer dryad, deadliest serpent of the east. The Indian rope trick, without an Indian and without a rope, mind you. Never before witnessed by occidental eyes and never again, and maybe not even this time. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes, Jocelyn. 
There is magic left in the world today. The magic of kindness. One to another. Enchantment still lives in a cynical world. And as long as enchantment lives, we shall live. We are finding that out more truly than ever, Jocelyn. So thank you, children, Hillsdale, and America. Thank you all. Greetings, Mr. Harvey. Have a nice lunch? Terrific, Sammy. Other guy must have bought. Susan, did I just have a wonderful lunch? Other fellow must have paid. Had lunch with the chairman of the membership committee of the Knights of the Fourth Estate. No, really? They're considering me for membership. Well, that's a wonderful honor. On account of the Arabian Days? Yep. They say the campaign best exemplifies the American spirit of mutual help and unselfishness toward the weak, the oppressed, and the unfortunate. Well, how wonderful for you, George. If it happens. And incidentally, in the meantime, it's sending our circulation sky high. Oh, but it's the honor that counts. You know, Susan, you know what uh, being a knight of the fourth estate means in hard cash? Oh, why, George. The offers. Wow. And the recognition by the Pulitzer Prize Committee. Don't forget that. George Harvey, if that's what this whole big week has meant to you, you're a selfish-seeking, conniving, mercenary heathen. And I'm really ashamed. Well, Susan... Oh, go away. Hey, boss, look what just came off our press. Now uh, what? Talk about boners, read that. What is it? Well, it's just your routine write-up of the mayor's remarks about your Arabian Day's campaign. Oh. Now, read the last couple of sentences, please. It represents the true spirit of Hillsdale, a spirit which has animated our history since we were lonely Fort Hill on the Indian frontier. Mm-hmm. The mayor concluded... Well, that's the end. Oh, no, no, it reads, The mayor concluded the pool by the wayside is very, very small, yet it mirrors the sun with the best of them all. What? Give me that. If the pool should grow larger, it would not be so fair. I'm dead. As it mirrors the sun in the sweet summer air. I'm dead. How did that get in there? Well, that's the song we sing at the children's home. Well, song or not, it makes the mayor say he's against expanding the city's water facilities. He's been dodging that issue squarely until after election. And here we have him say that if the reservoir were larger... What's it say again? It would not be so fair. It would not be so fair, yeah. Well, when his honor sees that... Oh. His honor's on the membership board of the Knights of the Fourth Estate. Uh, Get that phone, somebody, will you? Morning Star, city desk, sort of. Oh, yes, sir, he's here. Who? Him. I... Hello? Hello, Mr. Mayor. (laughs) What's the good word? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yes, it was an inexcusable lapse of journalistic... Yes. Oh, quite. Yes, Mr. Mayor, of course. A full retraction, sir. Oh, surely, on the front page, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Part of a song. Susan, those kids were in the office. I'll bet Rodney had no, something no, to no, do with it. No, no, not Rodney. From the battleship of the same name. George, you won't touch that boy. Let me at him while I'm mad. That way it's only murder in the second degree. You won't lay a hand on him. Not if I can find a length of pipe. Hello, Mr. Harvey. Hello, Hello, Miss Susan. Hi, Sammy. You made out your will, sonny boy? Huh? Rodney, somebody added something to a story that was in George's typewriter. Innocently, I'm sure. But it went to linotype that way and got printed. It may make a lot of trouble for Mr. Harvey. Oh, gee, Miss Susan. I didn't mean any harm. It was a typewriter and... Oh, I liked it typewriting. All I could think of was our song. Sure I did it. All you got to do is that. I don't lie. Now, Rodney, please. Please, dear, don't cry. Excuse me, but somebody told me I'd, I'd find my son. Oh, Rodney. Oh, my mother. Oh, what are you crying for, sweetheart? Who hurt you? Tell me. Nobody hurt me. Oh, he'll be all right, Mrs. Hope. I... I lost my allowance. That's all. Nobody hurt me. And I didn't get a chance to tell him. But I'll make it up to him. It was my fault that he he lost his allowance. You know, George... Rodney likes you very much. I'm glad, Laura. 
I'm glad I came to Hillsdale. So am I. Rodney can't stop talking about your idea, the Arabian Days Entertainment. <laughs> it was a charming thing to do. Well, Susan had a lot to do with it. The boss. She's very lovely. Actually, I never think of her as boss, except... Uh... Except when talking with strangers? No, no, no. Relative strangers, then? Well, not even that, Laura. <laughs> not even that. <laughs> Rodney likes George very much. Very much. A man who's a hero to a small boy has one foot in heaven. <laughs> it's a long straddle from where Georgie boy has the other foot. Patience, do you think George would ever marry Laura? Good gracious, no. Well, then again, good gracious, yes. Mm. I think he might marry Laura. I think Jocelyn's father is a mighty handsome man. Well, where, for goodness sake, did Jocelyn's father come from? Steubenville, Ohio, or I mean, someplace. how did he get into the conversation? Yes, good-looking man, Jocelyn's dad. Saw him on a couple of visits to the children's home. Hate to say this, but he looks a bit like Georgie boy. Oh, newspaper experience? I got a kind of hunch, yes. You could check with the home. I see. Says in my book there's no such thing as the indispensable man, it says. Patience. Call George up. Invite him for dinner. Lately he had the lean and hungry look. It must be love. But in case it's malnutrition, I ought to know about it. Oh, and then see if you can find Jocelyn's father in Steubenville, Ohio. <laughs> Ah, nice out here in the swing. George. Listen to I... those crickets. George. They make that racket by rubbing their legs together. Probably a nervous affectation. No, no, no. They do it on purpose. Interesting nature, don't you think? George. Now, take the hoop snake, for example. All right, I'll take it. Now, what do I do? There's no such thing. <laughs> George, I, 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 I really want... I go on wa... being deadly boring like this all evening. George Harvey, you've been tormenting me all evening. Well, I've been trying to ask you one simple question. Mm -hmm. Laura Hope. You going to marry her? No. Yeah. She's cute. Do you love her? I like Rodney very much. Do you love her? Here's a nice, growing boy right out of stock. No soggy, rancid infancy to fool around with. No diapers, no walking the floor at night. No gamble. I know it's a boy. Do you love his mother? None of that nervous nonsense hanging onto some doctor's lapels while a baby is being born. This is a pushover. I think I'll buy in. All right, George. Well, I'll be moving along. Good night, George. Yeah. Good night, boss. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Morning Star. Hello, little typewriter. Oh, dear. Hanging over rather exuberantly, I take it. No, no, not a bit of it. Not in the least. I just got a bit of a document in the morning mail. Care to scrutinize it, madam? More horse plane. George! George, you made it! <laughs> Mother, I am to play quarterback in the game against dismal normal. For a distinguished achievement in the field of creative journalism. Uh -huh. You're a knight of the fourth estate. At a substantial boost in salary, I dare to hope. Ah, uh, yes, yes, family man and all that. Pardon? I said family man. Oh. No? It seems another tall, dark gentleman has entered Laura's life and, in addition to a genuine affection, can also bring to the partnership a charming little daughter, name of Jocelyn, saving Laura no end of inconvenience. A fellow from Jacksonville, Florida, I think. No, Steubenville, Ohio. Jacksonville, Florida. Steubenville, Ohio. I ought to... No, Jacksonville, Florida. You're right. Who am I to argue with a knight of the fourth estate? Well, the paint is still wet on him. Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in a moment. You know, Susan... 
I wish I had a middle name. Like John Greenleaf Whittier or James Gordon Bennett or Tinkers to Evers to Chance. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have a middle moniker so that I could endow something in later life, the way I feel now. Like the George Dockweiler Harvey Award for Journalistic Achievement. Well, how about just, um, the George Harvey Pat on the Back Award for being a nice fellow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You like that, hmm? Well, it, it, it has the virtue of simplicity. Harun El Rashid Harvey, Caliph of Mumdad, Defender of the Faithful. It is my pleasure to confer upon you the George Harvey Award for being a nice fella. Hey. Hey, that's a great idea. You like it? Hmm? Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then.